happy Earth Day or day after Earth Day. I think there's a few different days that are being treated like Earth Day this year. And it's such an important time for that. Um, I have been uh, considering, you know, what does this time call for? And what do I need for my practice for this time that we're at? And um, that has a lot to do, actually, with coming into the earth of myself. And it has to do also with, I, like, from my practice, I want to practice uh, strength, and I want to develop resilience. So we're going to be doing our, a standing pose practice today that em does emphasize building strength at the joints rather than just uh, muscle length per se. And, and also some of the ways we'll be approaching things uh, also brings in a quality of um, carving in shape and circular, circular patterns in shape which uh, can give it a different sense of space around us than some of our more linear movements. Um, uh, yoga is really about shifting our awareness, shifting our awareness through our bodies, through this entering into the, the sensing, uh, feeling, thinking body, as it were. Mr. Iyengar was to talk about uh, the mind of the body, not mind as separate from body, but the mind of the body. So we're going into the mind of our bodies here. And we're developing awareness. And then that awareness just applies to everything. So here's a passage from Rilke, a letter of Rilke, written uh, right at the beginning of World War I. And uh, I was so struck when I came upon it, how it seems to apply to today. Harm and decay are not more present than before. Perhaps only more apparent, more visible and measurable. For the harm which humanity has lived daily since the beginning cannot be increased. But there is increasing insight into humanity's capacity for unspeakable harm and perhaps where it leads. So much in collapse, so much seeking new ways out. Room for what new can happen. So to have awareness and to build strength to support that awareness and is kind of like making room for the new to happen. So, on to practice, <laughs> to making room for the new to happen. Feel the base of your seat. Feel the earth through where your light, legs contact the ground, through your sitting bones. The sitting bones are kind of like feet when we're sitting. So let the feet of your sitting bones be earthy, connect with the earth, feel where your sitting bones touch. Are you a little more forward on one, back on the other? Imagine the inner edges of both sitting bones going down. Actually, let me change that. Imagine the outer edges of both sitting bones going down and the inner edges lifting up. One, one can play with different imagery. Or you could do both. And from uh, that quality of lift, find a movement upwards along the sides of your spine, all the way up to your top chest. And then let your eyes soften with the skin of your forehead release. So there's almost a kind of raining down from the brain. Let your breath flow. 
And let your breath help you feel that quiet earthiness of your own self. Moist earth. Bring your palms together, roll your sternum. And let's chant on together if we can. Bow your head and your heart. Release your hands to your thighs. We are going to start with a block lying on our side. And you could, you could have a blanket for your head, or if you're comfortable just lying without the blanket, that's that's fine too. You could actually rest your head on your arm. Actually, I think I'll just rest my head on my arm. <laughs> and I'm going to start. So, well, even before I do anything with the block, you know, we often, often if I start on my back, I really want to feel the earth through my whole back. So, let's take a moment here to feel the earth through the side, the side of your body. I guess I turn actually to my right side, but you can feel any side. And just let yourself contact the earth there. I don't know if you're a sideline sleeper, um, but there's something, if I just lie down on my side, you know, in the middle of the day, there's something so soothing about it and so um, kind of contemplative, like the eyes soften, the throat softens. So just feel that. Now we'll take the block first and put it in between the knees. No, I take that back. Let's first put it in between your feet. And hold your feet up off the ground. And so we're going to begin here with a little hip range of movement, a little bit strengthening, uh, strengthening um, exercise. <laughs> So I'm lifting my knee up as I hold my feet off, off the floor. So this is an external rotation as the knee goes up, and as the knee drops down, there's internal rotation. Can you feel that rolling of the head of your thigh bone, the head of your femur, in your hip joint? So the hip joint is this round, glo global joint. So feel that internal rotation, external. So we're working here to keep the block off the floor. So this isn't just range of motion. There, there, is, there is a little exertion here. Feel what muscles that are activating there as you lift your knee up, and as you keep your feet lifted up. And then, I don't know, that might have been about 10 repetitions. <laughs> then go ahead and take the block and place it in between your knees. And now, this is a little less effortful, uh, but I'm feeling the extent of my internal rotation now of the thigh. As I lift the foot and bring it down, it's a little externally rotated. Lift the foot as high as I can, internally rotated. So now the effort's being made to internally rotate it more. 
Again, just try to track your thigh bone into your hip socket. Feel that. Where is that great big hip socket? Kind of at the center of all of our weight shifts, of our mobilizing, our moving through life. So I'm not really counting, but you can do somewhere between five and ten of those. And then release your legs. Lie down on your back for a moment. Notice if there's, just do a side-side comparison. I, I feel a strangely big difference from side to side right now. And I, I, can, I can sort of feel, I, I even feel a difference in the shoulder. And the, and the hip that was moving. The hip that was moving seems kind of longer and wider, clearer. Now go to your second side. You don't have to change directions as I have done. Um, and first the block goes in between the knees. Also take a moment to feel this side. Connecting to the floor, dropping down to the floor. And then lift your feet up off the floor. And um, did I get this backwards? Yeah, we started it with the feet. Sorry, I got it backwards. First place is in between the feet. And you lift the feet up off the floor and lift the knee and down. You can organize your breath. How you like. You could breathe in on the lift, exhale on the way down. You could reverse that. But do breathe with the movement. And then place the block in between your knees. You can let your top foot drop down. You can release your weight onto the floor. And then lift the foot. So you're internally rotating the thigh as the foot lifts. External on the way down. Be aware. What are the muscles that work to do this? Where do you begin to get tired? Try to track the head of the thigh bone. Track the round uh, head of that thigh bone, the femur bone. Can experience that as a smooth rolling. And then remove the block, roll back onto your back, and just compare sides here. Let your arms drop down, let your feet feel the floor. Even think of the feet as making a seal with the floor, with the earth. Now straighten your legs, straighten your arms, and just do a long uh, Sutta Tadasana. Sutta meaning lying down, Tadasana mountain pose. And then roll to your side and come up. Okay, now <clears throat> um, we're going to be staying sitting now and continuing to do some leg, uh, leg range of movement, but 
active movement too, which is quite strengthening uh, in the active movement in the hips, joint movement. So I'm going to let my, this is not going to be like a, uh, a, a, a formal or what is an R.I. Yangar style former, formal um, sitting forward bends where there is a very big emphasis on being upright on the sitting bones. In fact, you can do that first. So this is a dandasana, a uh, staff pose. And when I practice dandasana, I'm really upright on my sitting bones, trying to feel vertical uh, as I was vertical up through the torso, through the crown of my head, up on my sitting bones, not back. But now, I'm not going to let myself just be back, really wherever I am on my sitting bones here. And uh, again, I'll have my feet grounding, sealing to the earth, and then uh, my hands behind me. And I'm just going to go through a range of motion of dropping the knees to one side and then dropping the knees to the other side. So feel that internal rotation, external rotation. You can even let one leg lead and the other leg follow. And if you want to do this sitting up a little higher, that's fine. You don't have to be leaning way back. Depending on your flexibility, it'll become easier to lean farther back or sitting farther up is fine. And now we'll go over to one side and come into a little twist. And again, if this isn't as upright as you would be if you were on a lift, um, that's fine. Just come into a twist here. So it's a sort of relaxed Baddha Vajasana pose. And then to the other side. But let yourself enjoy the, 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 the circling of your ribcage around and the look over your shoulder. Feel how, and then go to the, back to the first side, feel how this is a really, really natural, easy spiral for the body. A spiraling of the spine. And feel the whole length of your spine too as you go. So the ribs wrap around. The head almost follows the movement. And come back to center. Now we'll go and just stay on one side. And I'm going to make a... Uh, kind of pinwheel shape, which we'll be returning to here. So I'm not letting my knee come all the way up to my foot. I'm actually having uh, this leg go, like the thighs are at a 90 degree angle to each other. Now I'm going to lean forward to, in, so that I can lift my back foot up. So that's that internal rotation. I'm really working quite a lot around the hips to do that. And then I'm going to lean back, and you can go as far as you need to go to be able to lift your whole, this whole shin bone, the front shin bone up. So I don't get much of a lift if I stay, but I can just barely get it lifting. And then forward. And do try to lift the foot more than the knee. The effect is that the whole shin lifts, but do try to lift the foot more than the knee. So I go forward and lift the back foot. I go back and lift the front foot. One more time, forward, back foot. I lean back and I lift the front foot. And now come through center again. You can let one leg lift and sort of lead the other leg. And then I lean forward and lift the back foot. Lean back. So that we get the chance here to play with our legs, to lift our legs in ways that we're very accustomed to lifting our arms. <laughs> the, the idea that I can lift my great big leg without using my hands to do it uh, is, is, is nice. <laughs> it's kind of refreshing. Lean back and lift the front foot. And then come back to center. And now we're going to do a, uh, a 
actually, let's let's take a little bit in, a bit in between down dog here. So this is, a, this is our first down dog, and let it be a kind of um, sort of moment, a baseline moment to feel your legs, feel the thigh bones rising up into the hip sockets. Do you, do you have some awareness of where your hip sockets are? <clears throat> Can you draw the thigh bones into the hips, but then move, and then move the very tops of the thighs back? And then come down slowly, slowly, touch both knees at the same time. And let's come back to where we were. And I'm gonna, we're gonna go through a uh, sequence now of moving the legs, moving the legs, uh, which will take us through forms that are rather like the, the basic uh, yoga sitting forward bends. But we'll start, and we will start, not but. Okay, let me just think this through. Okay. We're going to start facing in our, in our first direction. Then it's going to turn forward, and then it's going to go back again. So we won't actually make it around 180 degrees. It's just this 90 degree shift. So I start facing. I hope I have, you know, I almost every week credit Harry Orko with, with some of the more, um, playful and different movements. And this is from also from Harry Orko. So I'm facing uh, my front leg, lean forward as we did before. I lift the back foot up and then lift the whole leg up off the ground. And I can put my hands wherever I need to to make this possible for me. Then I reach the leg forward and place it down. And I stretch out through that leg. Uh, uh, like I'm doing my Dandasana, and I come forward over the leg, and you can have your hands wherever, and don't think so much about how, for, how far you're going, or even the shape you're making. Just let yourself come forward, and then come back up. Turn in between your legs, and come forward. You can use your arms wherever it feels helpful to you. You do want to be trying to take your pelvis forward over your hips. And now face your, uh, this knee, and, uh, okay, I got that a little bit mixed up. We're not actually going to come forward there. Now we're going to come to the side. So let your arm come up and over and to the side. And again, it's not how far you go. It's just that you're moving into that direction. You're, you're, gra you're grounding yourself through your legs. And then come up. And now <clears throat> lift up this front foot and internally rotate, and come forward over your straight leg. Come up, lift the straight leg, externally rotate, and fold it in. And now you're on a pinwheel having turned 90 degrees. So this will be our second side. Lean a little forward, lift the back leg. Lift the whole leg, you can feel the work being done in the hip, and then turn and Come forward over that leg and come up and come forward in between your legs and come up and turn and face your knee and come over and come up, lift that front foot, internally rotate and face your straight leg and come forward over your straight leg. Come up. Lift that straight leg, externally rotate it, bend the knee in, and it's our first side. <clears throat> so I hope you're feeling how your hips are working. <laughs> okay, here we go again. <laughs> we just repeat that whole thing twice. <clears throat> I lean a little forward to let me lift the back foot, lift the whole leg, turn. Straight leg, I come forward over that straight leg. Come up, I come forward over that leg. You can play with your arms in different directions, in different uh, ways here. Um, hands on the floor, I find supports me if I, the, the most, but as I, I sort of get warmed up, I can play with other arm positions. 
Come nice to take the arms behind. Come up, turn and face the knee. Come to the side. And come up and lift the bent leg. Internally rotate it. Place it down. Face your straight leg. Come forward over your straight leg. And come up. Lift the straight leg. Bend the knee. We're ready for our second side. Come forward. Lift the back foot. Lift the whole leg. Turn and straighten it. Turn towards that front leg. Come out over the front leg. Come out in between the legs. Turn towards the bent knee. Oh, and yes, come sideways out over that leg. So we've got that pose we'll be doing later. And now lift and internally rotate. Face your straight leg again and come out over your straight leg. And come up, lift that leg, externally rotate it, bend. And there we are, we completed that. And come back through center. Now, <clears throat> see if you can plant your feet in front of you. Give a little push off the floor and come into a squat. If you know that that's gonna just, that's not, that's not happening, you just take, you can take a blanket and place it under, and just stand up, get your blanket, place it under your heels, and come down with a little support under your heels. But give it a go, see if you can roll forward onto the feet. Um, what we, that exercise that we just did that does tend to somehow um, activate and integrate and you know, deepen the folds of our joints uh, as well. Uh, so this for me is, uh, it comes pretty well after that exercise we just did. Also, if you have a knee situation going, and that's what's making the bending difficult, you can roll up a blanket and place it behind your knees. You can still have the knees uh, apart and then bend, and that can make a very big difference if there's a, a limited range in the knees for, for any reason. So whatever position you come into, try to reach down through your heels and feel the whole softening and broadening of your back here. Feel your thighs close to your ribs, almost like moving to the sides of your ribs. Have a nice widening, long back body. Now you've all been there a long time, maybe. I thought I was showing those variations. Now come forward, walk your feet forward. You can have your hands on the floor. <clears throat> then you can keep your legs a little bit bent here for, it's like a, like a little bent leg, Uttanasana. And then again, you can feel with bent legs. Um, if you're, you know, if you're a tighter body like my, like me, um, with my legs slightly bent, I feel the ribs closer to my thighs than I would if my legs were straight. And then from here, I'm going to roll up through my side spine, who is slightly bent. Now I'm going to take a blanket, and if you don't have a yoga blanket, anything that you can fold kind of compactly will work. And I'm tightly rolling the blanket. And so this roll can be any height that is appropriate for your purposes. So let me show you what we're going to be doing with it. We're going to be placing the ball, the ball of the foot right up on the top of that rolled blanket. And then um, we're going to reach the heels down. So the higher that the higher that roll is for me, the more challenging it is for me to stand up right, you see the way my hips want to go back. So for the upright position, I'm just going to do a little, I'm going to help myself by stepping my other foot forward, and then I can bring my hips forward, bring my tailbone forward, and 
send my uh, straight leg heel down. That's my right leg right now. My left leg is forward. And I'm reaching down through my right heel, trying to keep connecting through the outer right heel, especially trying to find sort of an inner line through that leg. I actually want to keep lifting my arch here. And I'll go to the second side. Step one foot forward, keep down through that heel. So on my leg, my arch tends to collapse because of the tightness in the Achilles and the calf. So I want to reach down through the outer left heel, lift the arch up, bring my tailbone forward. I could also think of that as bringing the sitting bone forward. So I'm really bringing my awareness down towards up. Length down that back leg, an opening of the back knee. And then back to two legs. See if that comes a little bit easier. Maybe stretching my arms up will help me move my sitting bones forward here. And then I'm going to bend at the waist and come to put my hands on the blocks. You might not need blocks if your hands come to the floor. That's, that's, that's lovely. That's fine. But do try to reach your side ribs forward. Move your chest forward as you, once again, descend your heels, descend the outer heels more, lift the arches up. Do be in contact with the big toe ball mounts going down though. So I'm not trying to evert my foot. I'm just trying to get an equal, an equal reaching down through the outer heel as well as the inner heel. Lift your sitting bones up now as you move your side ribs forward. And then up onto your fingertips and come up again, see if you can Stretch your arms up, that's not coming any better now. <laughs> and then bring your arms down and step off. That was that. You can fold up your blanket again. And uh, we're going to take our blocks flat now. And we're going to do a down dog with hands on the blocks. For me, uh, it helps to put the heel of my hand at the front edge of the blocks. Uh, that's not necessary. That just keeps my hands from slipping. You can figure out what best helps your hands from slipping. Having done that, I want to wrap my elbows in, bring my upper arm bones in. <clears throat> and again, I'm lengthening my heels down to the floor here. So this is a very, if I take my hands a little bit up like this, my feet begin to feel the earth of a little bit easier. I can get the whole foot coming down, get the heels coming down. Feel if one foot tends to connect more than the other. Try to match that with your other foot, with your other leg. It's like you're exploring uh, center channel of each leg. May each leg be as vivid as the other leg. Now walk your feet back forward and we'll come to an Uttanasana with the feet completely on the ground, sealed to the earth and draw up from there. Draw the earth up through your legs. I got that image from Jenny Capular this week. Draw the earth up through your legs, up through the channels of your legs. <clears throat> Let your elbows widen out. You can have your hands on your shins here. The fingertips could also be on the floor, but wherever they are, let your elbows be wide so that you get a sense that your collarbones are also wide. There's a kind of ease in your upper body. And now look forward, take your
your hands to your hips and move your chest forward, draw up through your legs, this time swinging up from the hips. Let's use our blocks now in a few of our standing poses. So widen out your blocks on the back of your mat, stand forward and come into Tadasana. Bring your feet together today and have a sense of drawing into the center line at the hips. So can you have a sense actually that your sitting bones are coming together here, that your outer hips are coming in? I, um, I hope that the, the hip area, like where the hip joints are, feels a little bit, um, you have more of a felt sense of that today. Swing your arms up and link your thumbs together and lengthen up along this center line. Change the interlink. Open out your arms and release. Swing up again. Bend at the ankles, the knees, the hips, lengthening your heels back, reaching up through your arms, and come up, opening out your arms, and Tadasana. Bring your fingertips up, bend and jump wide. We're going to come into triangle pose. Find that seal of your whole foot on the floor. Outer feet as much as inner edges of your feet draw up through your arches, up through your shins, up to your thighs. Again, like you're drawing the earth up into yourself. Turn your left toes in, turn your whole right leg out. And triangle pose. Feel the thigh bone. Draw it up into your hip. Take your hand to your block. Earthy in your feet, and then find that this shape in space through your whole self. Lengthen your right ribs to the right. Draw your right thigh bone into your hip more. Press down through your feet. In and come up. Turn your feet forward. Turn your right toes in. Turn your whole left leg out. And exhale, come to the side, draw your left thigh bone into your hip, lengthen your left ribs to the left, earthy through your feet, draw up the earth through yourself, and feel this shape in space. Down through your feet, breathe in, come up, turn your feet forward, and jump your feet back together. So there's a little carving of the arms on the jump, so let's enjoy that as we jump wide again. So a little bend in the legs, and then that reach out in, to the big spread arm position. Press your feet down. We're going to come into warrior two pose now. Turn your left toes in. Turn your whole right leg out. Keep the spread out through your arms as you bend your right knee to the right. Find the earth in your back foot. And let's come into Utita Parshvakanasana, side angle pose, lengthening your right side body out over your right thigh and carve your arm up and over. Press down through your left foot. Reach through that left arm. Move your right knee back into your right arm. I hope that, that movement of the right thigh feels familiar after what we did on the floor. And then press down through your feet and come up. Turn your feet forward. Spread through your arms here. Turn your right toes in. Turn your whole left leg out. And exhale, bend the knee out over the toes. Be earthy in your back foot. Come into Utita Parjvakanasana. 
Draw your left thigh bone into your left hip. Move your left knee into your left arm. Now turn the top arm. Carve it over through space. Press into the right foot. Reach through the right fingers. And draw the earth from your right foot through to your right fingers. going to take both our blocks to the side for a moment and I'm putting both the blocks together and I'm going to have, this could, you could keep your, you don't have to have the front foot lifted if this feels a little precarious to you, um, but I'm going to go into a very small lunge here. So my back foot is not as far back as I would have it in an ordinary um, warrior one pose <clears throat> and I'm going to come into a little bend of the leg and then I'm going to press both feet into the ground and draw them together and that has the effect of pulling my right hip back as it, it, bring, it brings my left hip forward. I'm on the same side as you right now as it brings my so, so you can even do that with the arms here of the pulling action as the Left foot moves towards the right foot. Right foot is pulling back to the left foot. And feel how that it kind of creates a, 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 a strong feeling in the hips. And now take both arms up, link your thumbs, and bend to the left here. No, no, I'm sorry. Bend to the right. Excuse me. I'm bending to the right as I keep that action going of pulling my right foot towards the left foot, left foot towards the right. And come up and straighten that front leg. Let's switch legs. So I'm pulling the left foot towards the right, right towards the left. And I can even do a little arm action to feel that happening more. Left foot as I come into the lunge. And I take arms up, link the other side, and bend to the left side. Keep moving your, um, actually you'll feel here that the left thigh wants to sort of fall forward. So I'm trying to move my left foot forward. Um, excuse me, it's my right foot forward. But I'm moving my, left, my right thigh back. The, the right thigh still does go back here and come up, and return up, back to the first side, and so this is it's this little mini, mini warrior one pose, and now I'm going to take both hands in front of me and open out into a twist, so I'm keeping, I'm still pulling with my front foot back, but I'm also moving my back thigh back here. Come out of the twist, twist back. Come out and keep that drawing of the feet together to stabilize you. And come back and come up. So I find that really challenging. It's 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 a it's a it's quite active. I'm doing the twist from from my torso, not from my arms moving me into the twist. So it's more of an active twist. <clears throat> and there are some balance elements too. You could also do this just against a wall. I just want to uh, show that this would also be done against a wall um, if, if uh, the balance is feeling too, too challenging in the middle of the room. So second side, bend into the lunge. Take your arms forward and open. Pull your feet towards each other and return. And it's tricky balance wise. <laughs> and open 
and turn, keeping the back heel down, does help with the balance. Can you think where we are now? We're going to keep our blocks on this side, but widen them out a little bit. I'm going to do another down dog here. So place your hands on the blocks and walk your feet back. So this is another down dog. Your heels might not be on the ground. And do start by getting lift in your hips. Lift up your sitting bones and then start to reach your heels to the ground. Now I'm going to look forward, bring my hips forward, and swing my right foot to the outside of the block. Very often we go in between, swing the foot in between the hands, but I come to the outside of the block. So there's a whole wider uh, scope here. Feel how just here, your thigh comes closer to your ribs. You can take your blocks higher if this is just not feeling quite right for your knee or your leg. You can take your blocks higher. So where was I? <laughs> Keep the back thigh lifting here. And reach your back heel back. So there is a counter tension here between the back thigh lifting here. Now, keep weight in your left hand and come into a twist. So lift the back thigh as you open up into the twist. And come back. Do that again. I left out a part. Um, come underneath now on the way back. So we're going to be moving in and out of this and coming underneath the arm on the way back and come into the twist. The back leg is like your rudder. You're keeping it very stable. And under the arm. So this is more of a, you get more of that quality of carving through space and that variation of uh, revolving side ankle pose. Arjuna Parjapanasana. Second side, I swing my left leg forward and lift my right thigh up. First, I'm just going to feel this, this the, the shape of the twist, lifting the back thigh the whole time, reaching through the back heel the whole time, kind of like a rudder. And then I reach under the right arm and open to the twist, resisting, lifting the right thigh, reaching with the right heel. Let your breath move. For me, inhaling on the twist feels pretty good. <clears throat> Exhaling as I come under. Inhaling. Exhale, come under. And then place your hand back. Take your foot back. Down dog. Draw your thighs up into your hip sockets. Imagine your moving your inner thighs back and your outer thighs back at the same moment. Walk your feet forward. Come into another Uttanasana. And you can have your hands higher on the blocks. Here, I want one higher box, that is. In order to lift up and move your chest forward again. So this is called upward facing. Uttanasana, descend your heels, take a seal of your whole foot to the floor, seal your feet to the earth, and draw the earth up through your legs, move your chest forward, move your sideways forward. Downward facing Uttanasana, we keep that drawing up through our legs as we release our head and our chest sideways down. Your hands can come, your hands can stay on the block. They can come to your <clears throat> legs, but let your, or come fingertips to the floor, but let your elbows widen and be soft in your abdomen, soft 
in your chest. Don't be pushing yourself downward. There is a kind of lengthening forward. There is a right moment to do more lengthening downwards of the head. Um, if you're a more flexible body, that uh, the vectors of that at, at one point just become like, yeah, you can just really reach your chest down. Um, if you're a tighter body, you're going to get more of that sense of lengthening the front body when you are in the up facing position. Come back to the upward facing position now, everyone. Move your chest forward. Move your side ribs forward. Take your hands to your hips and come up. Right. Now, that was Uttanasana. We're going to do Parjva Uttanasana. The Parjva is the side of the body. And in Parjva Uttanasana, we have one foot forward and one foot back. So I now act, I do have my blocks up high, and I'm going into a slightly longer stance here than the one we just did. This back leg is turned out a little bit. I want to just to feel that whole seal of the foot downward. That helps with balance a lot. You can also take your feet wider from each other, not on a center line, but widened out to help with balance. You can also have a chair instead of the blocks here. Okay, swing the arms up, lengthen the side, the parjva, upwards, press the feet, and now come forward, sort of carving up and out in space, and then bring your hands to your blocks, press your front foot down, and see if you can get that quality of pulling the right foot towards the left foot. See if that helps you uh, draw your right thigh bone into your hip more. Move your chest forward. Keep pressing both your feet down. So this is the upward facing phase of Parjva Uttanasana. And now for the downward facing phase, I'm going to imagine my front body is getting longer as I walk my blocks forward, or if your hands come to the floor, you can just walk your hands forward. And I'm going to actually try to feel my sternum sliding out over my right leg. Again, don't push this. Don't do this in a hard way at all. I'll let it be a kind of flow. And actually do less if you start to feel that you're pushing. Um, bring your hands back in. Move your chest forward again. Draw your right thigh bone into your hip. Press both feet down. And then take your hands to your hips. Breathe in. Swing up. And let's just change sides here, facing the same direction. Make a seal of the back foot down. Swing your arms up. And reach up and out as you come forward. Let your hands then come down to the block. Press your whole left foot down, especially get the left big toe ball mound, sealing it downwards. And then pull the left foot back a bit and see if you can get more of a, an experience of the thigh bone coming in, the left thigh bone coming into the left hip as you do that. This is the upward facing phase of the pose. Then walk your hands forward. Keep that action in your left leg, the press of the foot, the drawing of your thigh into the hip as you walk your hands forward and let your torso flow out over your left leg. Imagine your left sternum were moving on the same vector as your left shin. So you're not diving towards your towards your leg, you're actually trying to move out in space. In this, in the same, on that same angle, on that same vector. Walk your hands back in, press both feet, 
Move your chest forward. Take your hands to your hips and come up. We're going to do now, uh, this is the moment in the practice where we're going to do headstand. If you have a headstand practice, or sit at the wall in Baddha Konasana, which that means bound angle pose, and shown this on other on other videos. But and you can have a blanket under your head, so I'm not going to show that right now. And you can actually pull your <laughs> feet in with your hands. Uh, that may be the one time we're doing that in this class. And when I do pull my legs in with my hands for body konasana, I'm trying, I'm holding underneath my ankles and my shins. And the reason for that is that gives a, a roll out of the, the shins, which helps the legs then also externally rotate. I don't know if you can see that. And then I'm just, then I'm gonna use the wall to lift my ribs up the wall, press the outer edges of the feet together, see if I can open the inner edges of the feet. So this is a very strong action of pulling the outer knees into the hips. And it might feel especially good today after that, what we did on the floor at the start of class. It feels good to me. Like I feel like I can access those muscles a, a little better. And if you're doing, so do that or do headstand. And if you're doing headstand, you can be a little away from the wall, that's fine. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and be at the wall today, which means my knuckles are actually at the wall. And I'm bringing my, I'm wrapping my elbows in so that they're about shoulder width distance from each other. And then I'm pressing the forearms down as I do the leg actions of drawing up through the legs to lift the hips. So you can here go up with one leg, or you can give a little a bend in the legs and hop up, jump up. So I'm a little bit uh, to the front of my skull. For some years I practiced more in the back of the top of my head, but now I'm a little closer to the hairline. And I'm continuing the press of the forearms down. An image of lengthening from the uh, armpits to the elbows helps me do that. And as much as I press down through the forearms, I reach the legs up. I reach the inner heels now. So the, the inner feet here have a tendency to drop down. So I want to reach a little bit more to the inner heels. So again, match that the action of the inner leg and the outer leg to find this corridor in the legs. So if, you're, if your heels are at the wall, I, I forgot to keep mine at the wall actually, um, think about going up through the inner heel of one leg to bring it off the wall, then up through the inner heel of the other leg to bring it up off the wall. When you come down, you can either come down one leg at a time, but keep the press of your forearms down. So it's like you're keeping your, your scaffolding to keep your neck alone as you curl off the wall. That can also be practiced with straight legs. That becomes an even more challenging amount of weight. So you have to work even more in your arms then to keep the length of your neck as you come out of the pose. We're going to move back to the floor again 
And some of you will be happy just sitting directly on your sticky mat. Others of you may want to lift up one blanket or two blankets. I'm actually going to lay this blanket down with the corner of it facing forwards. So that, that, that's, the, that's the corner. And so my sitting bones are on the blankets, but my thighs, uh, there's sort of a little space under my thighs so they feel like they can just drop down. And this, this pose is called Upavishta Konasana. Um, and uh, it means sort of coming to, to sit near angle pose. But it is a spread of the legs. And at any rate, I want to feel my sitting bones on the blankets. And use the hands at first here to be up on your sitting bones. Because we will be coming forward from here. So first just feel like your legs are getting planted down. An advantage of not being on a blanket is that you get the touch of the floor uh, in your along your whole leg. So sometimes it is nice to, even if you're a stiffer body, just to sit on the floor and lean back. Um, let's just all have that experience. Use your hands and push off and come forward. And however far you have to lean back to get your legs on the floor, just, just do that. And just feel the floor on the backs of your legs. So that can just be fun for those of us who, who have less flexibility in the back of our legs. All right, but we're going to go back to where we were. So I'm just going to bend my legs, sit back up on the blanket, because now I'm actually going to try to roll my pelvis forward, and I'm going to use a second blanket, or for you, this might be a third blanket for you, or it could be any, anything, any fabric. It could be anything soft. And I'm going to take the blanket forward. And somehow for me, this introduces a quality of softness and flow as I come forward. Maybe because, of, because I am actually um, reaching into space, sort of like carving a shape into space. So there's a sort of more natural uh, integration through my, through my muscles and joints as I do that. And now I'm gonna take just one hand and take it out. The other hand can come around for support on the other side. Take it out past your right leg. Try that on the other side. So as I come forward, I am trying to feel again that the thigh bone is inserting into the hip socket and my pelvis is rolling over the thigh. I don't want to just be, I don't want to be trying to come forward just by bending my spine. It's not about, this is not about how far I go. Now, I'm going to stay with one hand, come forward, uh, so I'm coming towards my right, it's, well, it'll be your right toes, and then I'm going to keep facing this leg, keep facing the right toes, and come out and over, side bend, the other side, and repeat. I'm going to exhale as I come over. So here, let that top arm also be curving in space. And second side. And you need to come center on your sitting bones again. And towards your left foot. And then side. It's a twisting action, actually. And forward. And side. I don't know. 
that introduces a degree of fun for me in the pose that I actually find pretty challenging. See if you can come forward just a little bit more, rolling the pelvis a little bit more over, over the head of, heads of the femur here. Keep descending your thighs down. Try to open the backs of your knees down to the floor. You may experience a, a little bit more range here after what we just did. Keep firming your knees, reaching out through the inner heels especially. And then come on up. Right. We're going to first sit in Virasana. I'm going to open up the blanket this big. And I'm going to be a little bit more to one side of my uh, mat here. So maybe a little bit back this way. And then get a block. And you could put a blanket on top of your block if, if, if you need a higher support. And I'm putting that block in between my uh, ankles and sitting in Virasana, Hero's Pose. Now Hero's Pose brings us quite upright uh, on, on the sitting bones. So here I don't even feel, probably if I were sitting on the floor there would be a little bit of a tendency for the, the sitting bones to come forward tuck under, but being higher, do you feel that, that clarity of being up on your sitting bones? Place your fingers together, roll your palms forward. Breathe into the full circumference of your ribs here. Breathe into your back ribs as well as your side ribs as well as your front ribs. And then lift your back ribs up off of your hips. Interlace of the fingers. And breathe into the full circumference of your ribs. Descend your sitting bones and lift your back ribs up. Now we're going to go into another side bend, and we're going to be working towards a variation of a, a sitting forward bend called Parivrita, revolving uh, head to the knee pose, Janya Shirshasana. Our head will not be coming onto our knee. Um, and we're going to keep the leg in this Virasana shape. Now, if this doesn't feel good to you to stay in this shape, you could have the leg straight here. And it's Kind of, kind of like a, a right angle. But if you can keep it in the Virasana shape, do that. And I'm going to turn my, uh, well, this will be your left side arm. <laughs> turn that arm up. So palms facing up, the arm is turned. And like we did at the start of the class, similar to what we did then, I'm coming over and then I'm even trying to uh, press the hand onto the uh, to the shin and turn it and trying to bring my the bring the left side ribs forward here and then, so that's the turning aspect of this pose and taking my taking the right arm behind my head come out of that let your face face downward, let your chest face downward, and then come into it again. Draw from your outer, your outer left knee into the outer left hip. Feel how you have to, that's a kind of uh, anchoring place to help you turn from. And release. <clears throat> Let's uh, just come out of that and I'm gonna, you're going to see my back side as we go to the other side. So I might move my block slightly back, sit in your asana first. This will be your right leg I believe. 
I'm turning my turning the right arm up, taking the left arm up, and sliding out. And I draw from the outer leg, the outer knee into the outer hip, and I can press the hand a little bit and turn. Turn your to look down at the floor, let your chest come back to the floor, and then draw in to the outer right hip as you bring the right side ribs around and around. And then come up. And you can bring your leg back in to your asana. So you can repeat that. If that already seems like enough to just take in and digest, you can just repeat that. But I'm going to show a variation with the chair that is a very favorite variation of mine. And I'm going to have, uh, you don't, you could, I think you could use any chair for this. And you don't have to have a sticky mat, if you don't have a second sticky mat um, on the top of the chair. It, it still works without that. And I've got the chair, this side of the chair, towards the front of the mat, and the block, no, I'm sorry, I take that back. The chair is in the middle of the mat, but the block is more towards the front of the mat, and that's why I have a little extra blanket for my knees. So I've moved, I've moved towards the camera here. And then, so it's the same pose we just did. I'm opening out, that's the, the left leg is opened out. And now I'm gonna use this chair to help me feel the turning of my ribs, and you might have to move the chair either forward or back, but what I'm aiming to do is place the back side of just under my armpit on the front of the chair and put the outer edge of this arm on the chair. So I'm actually going to lean forward a little bit, hook the outer edge of the left arm on the chair, and then hold the chair. Now I'm going to reach the top arm over and try to get the back of the chair. Now, you could tie a rope to the chair, and that's one way I've done it. But the other thing I can do is push into my right chin, lift my hips up, and then oh, I can reach it. And then I drop my left sitting bone down, and I'm hooked up on the chair. Here, I can roll my right elbow back, Use my left arm as well, pushing my outer left arm onto the chair. So here my arms really are helping me carve in space and turn my left side ribs around, revolve my left, to left side ribs around. And I may even get to where I, I'm really, I can see upwards. Because it's almost as though I've, I'm, like I've come out of the, of the earth and I'm contemplating the cosmos there. So this pose definitely has that quality of coming from down and then opening up. Do we need to repeat that on, on that side? Uh, you know, let's just stay on one side and repeat that because it's a bit of a complicated action. Um, <clears throat> so let's just stay on the, on the one side and repeat that. So it's a little leaning forward. It's a hook underneath the armpit, the, the ribs, the back ribs, as much as you can get to the back ribs, and you hold the chair. Then you, your hand will either just reach, but mine doesn't. So I press my shin. I give myself a little lift up. I can even re-hook a little higher up, get the chair, and then use both arms. So that It's like the elbows are moving away from each other, actually. That might be a better image. I descend the left thigh. I draw the outer left thigh bone into the hip socket, and I move the elbows away from each other as I bring my left side ribs around and around, opening my chest up to the ceiling, and my gaze, I get a soft gaze upwards, stargazing. And come out. 
Right. Did you feel how much that you needed action in your outer left hip there? You'll you'll maybe be able to see me on my other side. So I, I'm going to block will move a little bit. Oops. I'm trying to keep my chair in the center of the back. My block will move a little bit now away from the camera because my front leg. So the reason for that is that the front leg is lining up with the far side of the chair, the far. So it's, if it's your right leg going under the chair, that inner right leg, you're trying to get it lined up with the chair. So you're not at too much catty corner with the chair, but this leg is lining up with the, this, this far side of the chair. So if you have a nicer view of my back here. So this is the area I'm leaning forward and trying to hook that area on the chair, turn the arm, hold the chair with the arm, other arm comes up, and if, if you can reach, go ahead and hold there, or give yourself a little push into your left shin so your hips lift, then re-drop your hips down, your right sitting bone will come down, and descend your right thigh, draw into your outer right hip, and revolve your ribs, move your elbows away from each other. Out of that, come up. I'm going to repeat that just to imprint that so maybe you can do it again on your own sometime. Come forward, hook the back ribs, turn the arm, bring the other arm up. If you have to give a little lift, do that to catch and then move the elbows away from each other. Move, revolve your ribs. See if you can sense the back right side ribs rolling around. Get that cosmic view. Get yourself stargazed. And go down, come out. Now, you don't have to use your chair. We're going to have our, a last forward bend of Hashimotanasana. Hashima is the western side of the body, and that's the western side of the body is considered the back body. So in my Hashimotanasana, I want to feel like the back body is widening and lengthening. I've got a block, and I'm sitting on a block. Now I, I could sit on just a blanket. I could. Uh, sit on the floor, I don't need to use a chair. But and I, but since I am going to use a chair, I'm going to widen my legs out so that I feel the outer frame of the chair. And I'm going to first come up on my sitting bones, descend my thighs, and then take my pelvis over the thighs and bring my forehead to rest on the block, what, whatever feels uh, Whatever position of the block helps my front body continue to lengthen. So I'm not shortening down to get my head resting on something, but if anything, I want the block to help me feel more length in my front body. <clears throat> so just reach out through your feet. You can even try to feel where are my feet in relation to the chair. For some of you, it'll be under and through the chair. But be sensitive with your feet. Sense from the soles of the feet where you are in space. Descend your thighs. Feel the whole circumference of your ribs. Feel the back ribs widening and also lifting, lengthening up over, up from the belt, the bowl of the pelvis. Abdomen is soft. Throat is soft. Be easy in your eyes. So 
I've made a setup here with my chair turned upside down. And you could do this pose with no chair, just with your feet on the ground. Lift up, come down, lift up, come down. The, what the chair gives is um, a nice feeling of height. You know, this, again, that sort of airy lift off, which, which is part of the, of the, the joys of the practice to get that sense that we can lift off. So I have laid two blankets and they're this, this orientation. Um, and there's a little bit of it over the bar of the chair. And uh, depending on the size of your body, you may want to adjust a little farther back, a little farther in, but I, I'm going to have to scoot my hips under the chair as best I can, and I want to get my shoulders on the uh, edge of the blankets and <clears throat> my hips under. So I could probably have moved my blankets in a, a little closer, so I'm going to redo that. And again, my measurement is that my hips are under, my feet are on the chair, and my shoulders are on the edge of the blanket. And I'm going to hold the sides of the chair, roll my arm bones down, press my feet down, and then do another little roll of the arm bones, which is, it's really our basic shoulder stand action. I can also kind of get my, make sure my feet are in a comfortable place. I'm sort of on the front of my heels here. And each time I roll my arm bones under, I want to try to feel that the very tops of the shoulders come more into contact. So because my feet are higher, I can get a little bit more on the tops of my shoulders here. I also want to have enough press of my arm bones down that the vertebra of my neck are lifting up off the ground. So here I'm lifting my buttocks up, lifting my sitting bones up. Soft and easy in my belly. I come back down and lift up again. Lifting my chest, lifting my sitting bones, the buttocks, the backs of the hamstrings are doing a lot of work, which is nice because we stretched them a lot today. Come back down and lift up. Now, if you'd like to have a variation here, you can. Bring your feet in a little closer together towards the center. Lift your sitting bones up again and take one leg up and then lift the hips up even more. Bring that foot down. Second side and lift the hips up even more. So that second leg is lifting up to sort of feel, huh, how do I, what do I need to do to keep both the hips lifting here? And bring that leg back down. Walk your feet back out wide. Lift your sitting bones up again. Lift your chest. Roll your arm bones down. And then come lower all the way down. Rest your legs on the back of the chair. Open your arms out. And just take a moment here. You could stay here for Shavasana. You could uh, also maybe get a little lift through your head. So one way to stay in that position would be to take your top blanket and either double it over so your head has a little lift or just so that your head is in a soft, on a soft surface. And then be here in a nice suspension. Move the back of your skull away from your shoulders. Let your arms spread out on the floor.
go of any hardness in your eyes, maybe at the back of your neck. Start to feel a kind of spreading out through your arms. You can actually let your arms drift up nice and wide here. Feel yourself in this little bit of a suspension in your knees. Feel yourself held as the chain is locked. Feel the movement of your breath. Your breath is soft. Like a breeze. Like you were in a tree feeling the breeze. And the breeze is from you. Feel your own flexibility, your own resilience. Pose, extend your next exhalation, deepen your inhalation, and your right hand. Bring your arms in and roll to your side. Thank you.